Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now the whole debate about whether Android smartphones should have expandable storage has been raging for a number of years. And it seems that the manufacturers can't make up their mind. One year Samsung's flagships have expandable storage, the next year they don't, the year after that they do again. The Nexus line never has expandable storage, but the OEMs that make the Nexus line have expandable storage in their own phones. It's a real roller coaster of a ride. But if you do have micro SD card support in your phone, the question is this, what is the largest capacity card that you can put in your phone? Now you might think it's a straightforward question, but it actually isn't. Let me explain. The SD card specification is defined by the SD Association, and it's made up of a group of manufacturers, both who make devices and those who make the memory cards. Now, the SD Association have currently defined three different types of SD card. Now, when I say SD card, I mean micro SD card and normal SD card, because there's actually just a physical difference in the form factor, but all the things about the specifications is exactly the same for both. Now, the original SD card was up to two gigabytes, and that was just called an SD card. But we went past the two gigabyte limit a long time ago. So therefore, the uh, association brought out SDHC. Now, SDHC has capacity limits up to 32 gigabytes, and that might be a number you've seen somewhere. For example, a lot of smartphone manufacturers say expandable storage up to 32 gigabytes, and that gives us a clue that they support SDHC. Now after SDHC came the next level, which was SDXC. Now SDXC supports capacities up to two terabytes. So technically any smartphone that supports SDXC can support cards up to two terabytes. And of course, two terabyte cards don't exist today. And that's why sometimes when people read that two terabytes, they say, wow, two terabytes, but actually you can't buy a two terabyte card. So therefore, to keep consumer expectations at the reality level, some smartphone manufacturers might just say SD card support up to 64 gigabytes or up to 128 gigabytes, which are really the current cards that are available at the time. And next year, they might say up to 256 gigabytes or whatever the cards that are most commonly available then. Now, while the SD Association defines the physical characteristics, the pins that are on the back of the card, how the devices interact with each other, the capacities, they also define how the files are stored on the card. Now, when a computer or when a phone wants to access a file, it needs to know where in that block of 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes where the file is. Is it at the beginning? Is it at the end? Is it split over several different parts? And to you do that, it needs what's called a file system. Now, a file system on your Windows PC would probably be something like NTFS. On Linux, maybe you're using EXT4. Now, one of the very most popular file systems dates back to the late 1970s, and it's called FAT, File Allocation Table File System. Now, FAT was originally developed by Microsoft, as I said, back in the late 70s, and it was used in Windows, it was used in Windows 3.1, it was used in Windows 95, it was used in Windows 98. And in fact, you could even use it in Windows XP. And it actually turns out that the preferred type of file system for uh, USB flash drives and for SD cards is FAT. Now there are different types of FAT. There's FAT16, there's FAT32, there's even FAT12 and FAT8. If you want to know a bit more about FAT, then please go over and look at the article that accompanies this video over at the androidauthority.com website. But the bottom line is this. FAT32 is the file system that is basically read by every type of computer in the world, including Linux, including uh, Macs, including Windows, including cameras, including smartphones, including media players. It pretty is much universal. However, there's a small problem. The first problem is that actually it's owned by Microsoft and actually some of the patents and the design rights, the copyrights of that file system are owned by Microsoft. And therefore, you actually find out that a lot of the big OEMs have to pay Microsoft royalties for some of these things, including for FAT support. And that's why actually Microsoft do actually make quite a lot of money out of Android. Not because they particularly produce anything for Android, although that's changing, but because they actually get royalties from some of the big OEMs. Now, once we hit that 32 gigabyte limit with SDHC, 
What happened then is that people started to look around at how good FAT32 was for bigger and bigger file systems. Now, one of the limitations for FAT32 is you can't have a file bigger than four gigabytes. Now, I'm recording this video on a Canon camera, and my camera, when it gets to a file size, actually two gigabytes on this case, but it could be four gigabytes on other cameras, it has to stop the video recording and start recording in a new file because the file is just too big for FAT32. Now, of course, really, in the days of HD video, 4K video, 8K video, these file sizes are going to get really big very quickly. So the SD Association decided they needed a new file system to replace FAT32 for the SDXC standard. And so they chose XFAT, Extended FAT. But guess who Extended FAT belongs to? You got it. It belongs to Microsoft. So here's another problem. Even the new standard that they've come up with belongs to Microsoft and Android OEMs and camera manufacturers and all these people have to pay royalties to Microsoft for XFAT. And because of that, there's actually no XFAT support officially in Linux. If you were to boot up, let's say, a Ubuntu distribution, you won't find XFAT there because it is owned by Microsoft and they don't have the right to use it. Now, of course, there are open source implementations, but having the code is one thing, but having the legal right to use it is a whole different thing. So here's an interesting thing. If you are to format a micro SD card on a Windows machine, if it's 32 gigabytes or less, Windows will format it as FAT32. But if it's bigger than 32 gigabytes, it will format it as XFAT. Now, actually, that also applies to, for example, USB thumb drives, flash drives. If you put a USB flash drive, a 128 gigabyte one, for example, into your Windows desktop and you try to format it, you cannot format it as FAT32. It will only be formatted as X FAT or as NTFS. Now, it's actually, during my testing, which we'll get to in a moment, I found out there's actually the difference between the support for FAT32 and the support for XFAT, which seems to be the biggest stumbling block in getting any particular smartphone to support a micro SD card bigger than 32 gigabytes. All that theory is very nice, but what does it mean in practice? What does it mean in the real world? Well, what I've done is I've done a number of tests so that we can see. First of all, I took a 128 gigabyte USB flash drive and connected it to a variety of Android smartphones using a micro USB to a USB OTG converter cable. I also took a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and used that in a variety of devices and see whether that was recognized. Now, here's the interesting thing. My USB drive came pre-formatted as FAT32, even though it's 128 gigabytes. But the micro SD card came pre-formatted as XFAT. And in fact, I reformatted both cards in the opposite uh, file systems to see whether that had any effect. So let's start with the my, uh, USB, uh, 128 gigabyte USB flash drive. Well, the first thing I did was I plugged it into a Raspberry Pi and guess what? It was not recognized when it was formatted as XFAT, but it was recognized when it was formatted as FAT32. I then took the same USB uh, drive and connected it to my Ubuntu laptop. And guess what? Again, when it was formatted as XFAT, it wasn't recognized. When it was formatted as FAT32, it was. So here we can see from the start that the Linux support for XFAT is limited, uh, whereas for FAT32, it seems to be okay. I then took the mic, this uh, USB flash drive and connected it into my Sony television. It's got a USB port on it and it can show photos and things like that. And again, when it was in FAT32 mode, it was it read by the Sony television, but when it was formatted as XFAT, it was not uh, read by the Sony television. And then what about Android phones? Well, actually, I connected it to a variety of Android phones, and when it was formatted as FAT32, it all worked fine. I, even, I connected it to a Note 4, to an Oppo F1+, Plus, to a Zenfone 2, even to an Amazon Kindle Fire, and it worked absolutely fine. But when it was in XFAT mode, some of those devices weren't able to read it. Now, more interestingly, I took the micro SD card, which is 128 gigabytes, and starting with it formatted as XFAT, I put it into a variety of devices. Now, actually, it worked in most of the phones. I was actually quite surprised how well it worked. In fact, it worked on the Note 4, it worked on the Oppo F1+, Plus, it worked on the Galaxy S7, it worked on the Note 5, it worked on the Kindle Fire, it worked on just about anything I could throw it at. 
but there were a few devices that it didn't work on, and let me tell you about those. This XFAT formatted 128 gigabyte micro SD card did not work on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2, on the ZTE Star 2, or on the Elephone P6000. Now, what actually happened is when I put them in those phones, the phone just didn't even recognize there was an SD card there. However, on the Redmi Note 2, it did actually say, do you want to format this card? Because it didn't recognize the XFAT format. And then when I reformatted it, it actually reformatted it as FAT32. And guess what? Then it worked. And in fact, when I took that FAT32 formatted micro SD card and put it into the ZT uh, Star 2, and when I put it into the Elephone P6000, it worked then as well. So basically, the pattern built up like this. Even though the cards are 128 gigabytes, even though they're bigger than that 32 gigabyte that's defined by the SDHC standard, most phones will actually read them because they have support for XFAT. And the phones that don't read them because they don't have support for XFAT will read them if you format them as FAT32. So what does all this mean? Well, basically it actually means that if you do buy a card that's bigger than 32 gigabytes, you've got a high chance that it will work in your phone, even phones that say they only support 32 gigabytes. But the trick will be to reformat the card as FAT32. Well, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it the thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe, download the Android Authority uh, app. Also use the comments below to tell me your experience of using large micro SD cards in your Android phone. And most of all, don't forget to go to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.